Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. So today's a pretty big day for the Second Amendment in California. I don't think during the history of my channel, which has been about 10 years now, that I've ever been able to report on two big Second Amendment wins in that state back to back. But that is exactly what we have here. Another big Second Amendment win that just came yesterday on the 31st of March. So let's talk about what's going on. This video is sponsored by Acre Gold, which in my opinion is the best way to get into gold. This is how I got into gold because we all know that gold is very expensive. So the upfront cost to get into gold can be quite a bit. Acre Gold lets you buy gold incrementally. Acre Gold has four different subscription plans. A new $30 plan for a one gram bar, a $50 plan, a $100 plan, and a $250 plan for a 10 gram bar. When your gold stash adds up, so each month that you pay for your subscription, it adds up. Once you get enough money for a 2.5 gram bar on the $50 plan, they ship you out a physical 2.5 gram bar of gold. Now, they also have that $100 subscription plan, which gets you into a 5 gram gold bar. Now, if you don't feel like storing gold on site is an option for you, Acre Gold also has a way to buy digital gold so that they'll keep the gold safe for you. And I suggest that you go over to their website, which I'm gonna link down below and check it out for yourself and figure out which one is gonna be the best option for you. Okay, so the first win was Bowling v. Bonta, which challenged California's handgun roster. And the judge in that case found that the requirements for loaded chamber indicator, magazine disconnect, and micro stamping were unconstitutional requirements to get on the roster. And so the judge uh, placed an injunction on enforcement, but he put a stay on his own injunction to give California time to appeal, in which case California obviously did appeal over time. And uh, the Ninth Circuit, unfortunately, has upheld that appeal, pending some further things that need to happen in that case. But still, that was a, a pretty big win, sending that message to the Ninth Circuit, saying that, hey, under Bruin, we find that these do not hold up to text history and tradition, and therefore the court finds that these provisions are unconstitutional. Now, the next big case, the one that we just got a win in yesterday, is Rena v. Bonta. And we've talked about Rena on this channel multiple times. I probably made six to eight videos on Rena v. Bonta, which also challenges California's handgun roster. In my opinion, one of the worst pieces of gun control in the entire state because it places like a, a basically a ban on anything new coming into the state unless you're in law enforcement or government or something like that. So in Rena v. Bonta, Judge Sabra just yesterday said that, sure enough, the magazine disconnect, the uh, loaded chamber indicator, the micro stamping, and in this case, which is a little bit different than uh, Bolin, this case also challenged the uh, add one, lose three part of the roster. So if you guys don't know, if anything new gets added to the roster, three things that are already on there have to come off. So anytime something new would get added, you lose three things that are on there, which is basically going to eventually bring it down to zero or one, right? So it was an even worse provision of the roster, and Rena uh, challenged that as well. And the judge found that that three to one trade-off was also unconstitutional. So now we have two district court judges uh, in the state of California finding these provisions of the handgun roster unconstitutional in the same week. Now, we know that the Ninth Circuit obviously, uh, you know, placed a stay on the uh, Bolin case. Now, the judge in this case, Sabra, also put, just like uh, in the other case, put a 14-day stay on his own order. So until April 14th, California has time to file for an appeal in this case as well. And so we expect that California will probably appeal. I don't know how long it'll take in this one, uh, but California will probably appeal as well. So that might seem like maybe it's not the best news ever. But here's the thing you have to remember. Now you have two lower court judges both saying that under Bruin, and both judges used Bruin uh, to, to come up with this order, both of these lower court judges have said that this is unconstitutional unconstitu and that cannot be denied by the Ninth Circuit when the Ninth Circuit does eventually hear these cases. So just like I did in the Bolin decision, let's go ahead and read the last paragraph, which is the actual order uh, of the judge's decision here. So uh, the last paragraph, which is going to be on page 30 of the Sabra decision, it uh, says, uh, conclusion and order. For these reasons, the court hereby orders the following. One, plaintiff's motion for preliminary injunction is granted as to California Penal Code 31910. B, 4, 5, 6, and 7. CLI, which is a chamber loaded indicator, MDM, magazine disconnect mechanism, micro stamping, and 
three for one removal pr provision. So the judge granted it an injunction on those provisions. Two, plaintiff's motion for preliminary injunction is denied as to all other challenge provisions of the UHA because obviously they were going after absolutely everything. But the judge says that all of those requirements being necessary to get on the roster are unconstitutional number three defendants are enjoined from enforcing california penal code 31910 b four five six and seven uh and number four uh posting of bond is waived and five preliminary injunction is stayed pending appeal or further hearing on this matter whichever occurs first so basically this is where he stays his own order uh, the court sets the matter for a telephonic status conference on April 14th, 2023 at 1.30 p.m., at which time the party shall advise the court on how they wish to proceed. It is so ordered, dated March 31st, 2023. The Honorable uh, Dana M. Sabra, Chief Judge, uh, U.S. States District Court. So if you watch the Bolin video where I read the same paragraph off of that decision, this one is very similar from Judge Sabra. So there is no way that the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals can look at these and take a look at the 16 page decision and the 30 page decision and all of the relevant data that's in those as to why the judges came up with their own specific orders and the injunctions in these cases. There's no way the Ninth Circuit's gonna be able to look at that and simply deny the fact that it's unconstitutional. Obviously we know that the Ninth Circuit typically sides or almost always sides with the state of California, but you know, given the new standards set forth in Bruin, they're not gonna be able to look at it in the same way. So while they might grant California's stay on appeal in this case, just like they did with the other case, I still think that once it actually comes down to, you know, hearing the arguments and giving their own order on this case, there's no way they're gonna be able to deny the unconstitutionality of it. So like I said before, it, it's, a, it's huge to have two wins on the same account, right? So challenging the same thing within the same week or so time frame so again a very big win for the state of california and we're going to follow this one closely just like we're going to follow the other one and so i'm really excited that really we're seeing a complete change in direction uh, in that state and i have a feeling that we're going to be seeing a lot more very big wins coming soon we got the mags we got other bands we got things that are sitting in front of uh, judge benitez we know that he's ruled on him in the past so again in the future i see some pretty big wins coming down the pipeline in the state of California and people in California might actually get their rights restored. So that would be phenomenal. And that's, you know, my wish and hope for the, uh, the, at least the good, you know, people of California who believe in their rights. So anyway, I want to thank you all very much for watching. I hope you guys have a, a great weekend if you're watching this on the weekend and you guys take care.